Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, the NTSB sends the Raphael Perker UAV penalty case back for further review. The F-35C completes first night carrier operations, and Gulfstream begins delivering their G650 ER aircraft. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. It's the first Airborne to be webcast in our fourth year of production. That's right, the first Airborne was webcast on November 18th of 2011, and we haven't looked back since. Even better, this fourth year of Airborne promises to be the most amazing yet, and we'll tell you why in just a few more days. The NTSB has ruled that any UAV, regardless of size, is an aircraft and falls under FAA regulations. This ruling relates to the case of Raphael Perker and his flight of a small UAV over the University of Virginia's campus in 2011. Perker was cited for careless and reckless operation of an aircraft and fined $10,000 by the FAA. Perker appealed to an NTSB administrative law judge and a ruling was issued that the small UAV was a model airplane and that the FAA had no rules in place to regulate them. The FAA appealed that ruling, which resulted in the recent board determination that the FAA may apply the regulations that prohibit operation of an aircraft in a careless or reckless manner to any unmanned aircraft. This case now goes back to an NTSB administrative law judge to determine whether or not Perkert was operating, quote, in a careless or reckless manner so as to endanger the life or property of another, end quote. If it is determined that he was, he's out the $10,000. That ruling could have a far-reaching effect in all areas of model aircraft operation. The F-35C Lightning II carrier variant Joint Strike Fighter conducted its first carrier-based night flight operations aboard an aircraft carrier off the coast of San Diego last week. Navy test pilot Lieutenant Commander Ted Dutch Dykeman piloted the F-35C test aircraft for the inaugural night flight from the USS Nimitz. The night flight included a series of planned touch and goes before making an arrested landing 40 minutes after launch. Starting earlier this month through last week, two test F-35C aircraft have completed 28 flights for a combined 34.5 flight hours and accomplished more than 75% of threshold test requirements. The aircraft also performed 108 catapult launches, 215 planned touch-and-go landings, two long touch-and-go landings, 110 arrested landings, and zero bolters. After the break, Gulfstream delivers the first G650ER. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Gulfstream recently delivered the first fully outfitted G650ER business jet to a customer. That's ahead of the 2015 projected delivery date. Tom Patton has that report. Gulfstream announced the upgraded G650 just six months ago. And now the first airplane is in the hands of its new owner. Gulfstream unveiled the G650ER in May of this year, and the aircraft received type certification from the FAA five months later. 
Larry Flynn, the president of Gulfstream, said, quote, it's a good day when you can deliver on your promises ahead of schedule, end quote. The G650ER travels near the speed of sound, with a maximum speed of Mach 0.925. At Mach 0.85, it has a range of 7,500 nautical miles, which drops to 6,400 nautical miles at Mach 0.9. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. I like meeting the people. The airplanes don't talk to you, but the people that fly them and the experiences that aircraft bring to everybody is just amazing. In this video, you'll meet Eric Fatla and AMP mechanic with a dream job. However, for Eric to get this job, he had to be a dreamer. Search EAA's Eric Fatla on Aero TV's news channel. The Experimental Aircraft Association recognized the contributions made to the world of flight by the aviators it has inducted into the EAA Hall of Fame during a banquet at the EAA Aviation Center in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. ANM congratulates these inductees and recognizes that their contributions help to keep recreational aviation strong in the United States. After these messages, Legend Cub helps celebrate Veterans Day. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back! Members of the Alamo Liaison Squadron in San Antonio, Texas performed a flyby routine during Salute to Veterans, a Veterans Day celebration that took place on Fort Sam Houston's MacArthur Parade Field. The flight of four L-Birds, or Liaison Aircraft, included two contemporary Legend Cubs along with vintage Piper L-4 and Taylor Craft L-2 aircraft. The Alamo Liaison Squadron was founded on the mission of keeping alive the memory of the forgotten heroes, the liaison pilots, who provided vital functions such as observation, spotting, communications, command and control, medical evacuation, and many other functions that just needed to be done on the battlefield. The modern Legend Cub is an airplane with origins in the sport pilot movement, created 70 years after the vintage Piper design it's based on. While not a warbird, the Legend Cub fits the genre of the liaison airplanes of World War II. The Antique Aircraft Association is seeking members with airplanes that hold previous NAA or FAI records. The board of directors of the Antique Aircraft Association and the Air Power Museum have announced that the 2015 AAA APM Invitational Fly-In at Antique Airfield will honor those record-setting planes and their pilots with their Join the AAA Record Breakers Fly-In theme. Antique Aircraft Association members will receive personal invitations to bring their classic and neoclassic aircraft that hold records to the fly-in. They already have two famous Curtis Robbins listed to be there. The Antique Aircraft Association said this is the opportunity for any of its members in any pre-1956 aircraft with a standard airworthiness certificate to join the AAA Record Breakers. In cooperation with the NAA, any Antique Aircraft Association members can apply for a spring performance license and it set a point-to-point -point performance record en route to Antique Airfield if the flight is at least 50 nautical miles. Those participating in establishing a record while flying to the fly-in will receive special recognition. The Academy of Model Aeronautics has posted a response to an Associated Press story that indicated drone sightings are up dramatically and numerous reports are received every day of drones flying near airplanes and helicopters 
or close to airports. The AMA responded that there's no doubt thousands of small radio-controlled unmanned aircraft, often referred to as drones, that have been sold in the U.S. over the past two to three years. And many owners have little to no knowledge of the safety considerations and best practices involved in operating these platforms. However, the AMA points out that no information has been available regarding the nature of these sightings or any investigative findings, leaving the public to believe that a catastrophic event is imminent. The AMA has petitioned the FAA make the reports of these UAV encounters available for review. AMA guidelines for model aircraft flyers have set the safety standard for radio control model flying for years and resulted in safe operations of these aircraft. The AMA is working with other organizations to promote education and safety in the new area of UAV operation. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, November 19th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And remember, the next generation of Airborne will be unveiled right after New Year's. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.